Absolutely delighted to be joined by Pear Anders Abrahamson. Uh, first of all, welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much for taking the time uh, so early in the morning to talk to us. It's a pleasure. So, 30 years, uh, EAU, that's, that's quite a stint, isn't it? Quite a long time, but it seems like yesterday. <laughs> time is flying. So, if you're looking back over that uh, time, what do you think uh, some of the highlights have been? The highlights um, were quite many, actually. First of all, I think our guidelines now are used extensively around the world, translated to 50 languages, including Mandarin, Portuguese, Spanish, and so forth. That's another, one of the major achievements. Uh, and the second one, I would say, our journal, uh, European Urology, being the leading journal uh, in terms of urology uh, around the world. And of course, when it comes to education, we are running not only inside Europe, but beyond the boundaries of Europe. So many uh, education events, pretty much every week, actually. So um, a lot of achievements. But uh, when I um, was appointed as Secretary General in 2007, I said, uh, we are going to turn globally. So that was a major step forward because now, as we can see here during this um, meeting, uh, we have um, a steady increase of people coming from uh, Far East, Japan, South Korea, uh, China, but also Latin America and Central America. How important is it, given the global reach uh, of the organization, that uh, you work closely with other organizations that set standards such as you? I think it's very important because the world is shrinking and uh, as long as we have been able to improve the scientific educational uh, events we are running, people really appreciate that. It doesn't matter whether they come from uh, mainland China, Taiwan, or uh, far Southeast Asia, or um, Uruguay, or um, Peru. Uh, um, we are talking about the same things. And uh, to improve the overall quality in terms of urology is so important. So uh, that's, uh, I think, uh, has been a major achievement we have reached during this period of time. Looking back, again, looking back over the time and picking up on what you've just said, what are some of the changes that you've seen in the field of urology over that 30 years? A lot of changes, because when I was trained as a resident 40 years ago, uh, it was mainly open surgery. Now we are mainly using uh, minimally invasive surgery, uh, less traumatic, and uh, patients are mainly staying uh, in our wards uh, for uh, one or two days, but we see more and more outpatient procedures. So it's, it's, it's been very beneficial for our patients to treat uh, stone diseases, uh, malignancies, etc., etc. And now, all of a sudden, I mean, uh, the development of um, uh, robotic surgery, of course, has been a major step forward. Looking at this particular conference, what are some of the highlights of this conference been for you? Once again, coming back, that is, it is a global uh, meeting, really, and to meet people from all over the world, it's, it's been wonderful. And in addition to that, we have uh, increased our number of attendees, uh, more than 1,000 uh, extra attendees when you, you compare to the meeting we had last year in Stockholm. And uh, it's interesting because uh, historically, only a few years ago, 80% of our attendees were sponsored by the industry. Now we're down to 45 so it means that we really appreciate uh, the overall quality of our educational events here and the scientific, scientific uh, context, I say. And finally, what about the future? What does the future hold for you? The future is very bright. <laughs> no, no, we, we, as we turn globally, this is uh, appreciated as the leading scientific uh, meeting in the world in terms of urology now. Well, that's great. Well, thank you very much indeed for talking to us and I yeah. hope you enjoy the rest of the meeting. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.